I go on the other side of that and I choose negative 1, the absolute value of negative 1 is what? One. Positive 1, right? So the absolute value of negative 2 is positive 2, negative 3 is 3, negative 4 is 4, negative 5 is 5. So the absolute value function ends up making a graph that looks like a B. And I've told you all that before. That's like I said, we're about to get into those graphs. So an absolute value function and a quadratic function are very, very similar. They operate a lot the same way. So if I look here in my domain, as I go to the right towards positive infinity, um, f of x goes forever. As I go to the left, it goes forever. So I'm going negative and positive infinity. Here though, when I go up and down, this arrow points up, right? So does this one neither of them point down right so my range doesn't isn't negative to positive it has a bottom right here and so it bottoms out at zero right so how would i write my range y is what greater than or equal to zero greater than or equal to zero good all right my x intercept and my y intercept for this particular graph is the same they're both at zero zero so nothing weird or quirky there all right, the maximum number of roots are zeros. So right now I only touch my x-axis right here in one spot, right? If I slid this graph down though, I would touch in how many spots? Two. Two, do you think I could ever touch in more than those two? No, you can't. So that's the maximum number of times that I'm gonna cross the x-axis. Now, that doesn't mean I have to cross twice, it just means I can. Because if I took this whole graph and I moved it up, then it wouldn't be touching it at all. And it would be zero, right? So it would, for an absolute value, it's either zero or it's two. It's never going to be one and it's never going to be more than two. Does that make sense? Okay. You're in behavior. So as I look over here, as I go to the right, as x approaches infinity, f of x is going up, positive infinity. Over here, as I go to the left, towards negative infinity, f of x is still going up, so towards positive infinity. So, and this graph is also continuous. There's nothing that's stopping anything from happening there. We are out with that. Okay, quadratic parent function, f of x is equal to x squared. So again, if I choose zero, zero squared, still zero. If I choose one, one squared is one. If I choose two, two squared is four, which is up here. If I chose three, I'd get nine. I'd be off my graph. That's as far as I can go. If I go over to the other side, if I square negative one, what do I get? Negative one times negative one is what? One. Positive one. If I square negative two, I'm gonna get two, two squared. Negative two squared is gonna give me oh, four. four. So my quadratic, which y'all are familiar with quadratics, look like this and make a curve. So very similar to that absolute value up there. Quadratic shall do number one. So my domain, I'm going left and right forever. So I have negative infinity to positive infinity. What about my range here? Is everything included? Do I have arrows going up and down? Mm -hmm. No. Okay. Wow. So. Greater than or equal to zero. Greater than or equal to zero, whatever my vertex is. In this case, it's at zero. So it's just like that absolute value. X intercept and Y intercept are the same here. All right, what about this one? How many times do you think it can cross the axis line? Twice, very good. All right, so it, like I said, this, the, the absolute value acts a whole lot like your quadratic. All right, so my end behavior, as x approaches infinity, as I go to the right, f of x is going up, so I'm going to positive infinity. As I go to the, on the left side of my graph, x is going towards negative infinity or to the left. f of x is going up, which will be positive infinity. This is also a continuous graph. There's nothing that's causing me any issues there. 
Okay, all right, with that. Yes? Okay. All right, cubic. Y'all have not seen this one. F of x is equal to x to the third. So if I choose zero, zero to the third is still going to be zero. If I choose one, that's one times one times one, which is still one. If I chose two, two times two would be four, four times two would be eight, which is off my graph, but it's up here, like, I don't know, about there. Does that make sense? Roughly in that area. If I chose negative one, all right, so negative one times negative one gives me positive one, right? Then I multiply times negative one again, gets me back to negative one, right? So that one is down here. If I did the same thing with two, I'd be down here about negative eight, somewhere around down in there. Does that make sense? So this graph looks something like that right there, ish. We call that one squiggle, because that's the best way to describe it. I mean like quadratics were like they're U-shaped. This one is kind of squiggly, so that's what we kind of say that. All right, so my domain here, what do y'all think? Just negative to positive. Mm -hmm. Negative to positive, goes in both directions. Range, what do you think about range? Negative to positive. Negative to positive, goes in both directions, very good. All right, x and y intercept are both zero, zero here, so I don't have to worry about anything there. All right, now this one's a little bit tricky. Any idea what you think about the maximum number of roots or zeros? Like you don't, you wouldn't know this. I'm just curious what you think. We have at least one, right? Okay. So let's look at this. A linear function is basically x to the first power, right? Yes? Can cross one time. A quadratic function is x to the second power, and it can cross how many times? How many times? Quadratic x to the second can cross how many times? Twice. Twice. So x to the third, how many times do you think it could cross? Three times. Could cross up to three. Does that mean it's going to cross three? Mm -hmm. No. This one only crosses once. So an x to the third, if we start adding other things, like if it was x to the third, then x squared next, and a constant, you know, like we extended it on out, it can go, it can come up, come down, and then go back up again. That would be where you would get three. Does that make sense? Okay. In behavior here, as x approaches infinity, f of x is going up, so it's approaching infinity. As x approaches negative infinity, f of x is also approaching negative infinity. This one is continuous. All right, before we flip over, I want you to look at this. So this is an x to the first power. It has an odd power, right? I'm talking specifically about power functions. It has an odd power, and x to the third has an odd power. So, and they go, if we look at our in behavior, they go in opposite directions for odd powers. And these are specifically power functions. If I look at an x squared, it's an even function, which an, an absolute value kind of acts as an even. It's really not, but it kind of acts as that. It ha they go in the same direction. Does that make sense? So the same would be true if I extended that. So like we have, if we had, so we had cubic, if we had an x to the fourth, which would be called a quartic function, its parent function looks exactly like this. Because I would do, I would have zero to the fourth power would be zero, and one to the fourth power would be one. Does that make sense? And then if I did two, two to the fourth power would be 16, so it'd be like way up here. But it would look just like that. Now, as I extended that out and I had x to the fourth, x to the third, x squared, and I added stuff to it, like, and which would be cause transformations, it would be like a W. But what that means is its in behavior would match the same as this one. The same would be true here. Like if I did x to the fifth, the same thing would happen is its parent function would look like this, but it would just get some more squiggles in there as my power goes up. 
Does that make sense to y'all? So my x to the fourth can cross up to four times. My x to the fifth could cross up to five times and so on as I increase the power. Does that make sense to y'all? Everybody okay there? All right, so let's jump back here. Square root function, f of x is equal to the square root of x. So if I choose values here, if I choose zero, square root of zero, still zero. Square root of one is one. Square root of two, we don't like that, it's a decimal, it's ugly. Square root of three, also ugly decimal. Square root of four is two. Okay, so if I go on the other side, if I try to go on my calculator and I try to take the square root of a negative one, what is gonna happen? It's gonna say not real. Yeah, it's gonna say no, right? It gives us an arrow because technically we can't take the square root of a negative. Now later you're gonna learn that we can find a way around that, but I can't graph that because it doesn't exist. Does that make sense? So your square root function looks like this. A square root function is tied to a quadratic function. So if you think about like the way a quadratic was, we flip back over there and you look, a quadratic, I had zero and zero, right? And then one uh, squared was one, and then two squared was four, right? If I flip that over here and I look at my y values, zero and zero, one squared one, two squared four, right? So it's basically, it's like half of a quadratic flipped over on its side. That's really kind of what it is. They're what we call inverse functions, which we talk about for y'all. So it won't have anything on the other sides? So Not for a square root function. Do what? No. Yeah, it won't be continuous, oh. you're right, it won't be. Now, it's continuous on the interval from here to here, but it's not continuous forever. Does that make sense? So basically there's a wall that blocks that from happening. Now, could we make a transformation that slides that over? Yeah, I can subtract something from it and move it. But as far as like the parent function, yeah, it is a discontinuous, we're gonna call it a discontinuous function because it doesn't go forever in both directions. All right, so our domain here also doesn't go forever in both directions, right? Like it has a starting spot, it starts at zero, so I would say x is greater than or equal to zero, and I would say the same thing for y, it is greater than or equal to zero. And again, once we make transformations, those numbers are gonna move, but for the parent function, that's where it starts. Does that make sense to y'all? So here, I still have an x intercept and a y intercept at zero, zero. Um, maximum number of times you think it could cross. So think about if I slid that thing around, how many times could it cross the axis? Mm. Once, yep, just once, very good. All right, so this one, it's gonna have an end behavior that looks a little bit different. So as I go to the right, as f of x approaches infinity, f of x also approaches infinity, right? No issue over there. But when I come back the other direction, x doesn't approach negative infinity, does it? X approaches this wall right here, which is at zero. And as x gets closer to zero, y also gets closer to zero. So whatever that point is, that's gonna be my going the other direction. Now again, that's assuming, now if I flip this around and I had it coming back this way because I did a transformation, then those would be swapped up. But for the, for the parent, this is how that is. And we would absolutely, I would call that discontinuous. It is continuous from here to the right, but it is not continuous forever. So we'll go ahead and label it as a discontinuous. Kind of depends on what, what curriculum you use, depends on what they call that. So typically a discontinuity looks a little bit different, but, but we're gonna go ahead and call that one discontinuous for now. All right, cube root. <clears throat> f of x is equal to the cube root of x. Okay, so here if I take the cube root of zero, still zero. The cube root of one, still gonna be one. Cube root of two is not nice. The next cube that I can take is eight, which I don't have, okay? But I can take the cube root of a negative. 
Because if you think about it, if I have a negative one times a negative one, that gets me positive one, right? But then if I multiply times negative one again, it gets me back to negative one. So it's okay to take a cube of a negative. So this is basically a sideways squiggle. Does that make sense? So it's, it's the inverse. It's the inverse of x to the third. Does that make sense? So it's going to look something like that. Y'all okay there? Does that make sense? Okay. All right. So in this case, domain going from negative to positive. That's nice there. I forgot what did this. Did we do this yesterday? Yes. Or yeah, they just have way more graphs. Um, and your range also negative to positive. Y'all okay there? Can you put zero in your calculator? Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. You have to go to math. And, and then, yeah. So if you go to like, oh. this will let you take any route. This one is specifically the cube route. So when you get ready to grab it, you can have, you can grab any of those. Uh, X and Y intercepts are both at zero, zero. That's a good question, Riley. I didn't get the fact that y'all wouldn't know that yet. Zero, zero. All right, maximum number of times that uh, this one can cross. <clears throat> it is only one. Even though the cube can do three times, it can go up and down this way. Even if I do this this way, it's still only going to cross once. Does that make sense? If, I'm, if it does like that, it's still going to just cross that axis, the x axis only one time. Does that make sense to y'all? Okay. All right, so in behavior, f of x approaches infinity, or x approaches infinity, f of x goes to infinity. As x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches negative infinity. It's an odd, it's an odd route, which means it's only gonna be, they're gonna go in opposite directions. Does that make sense? Same as an odd power. All right. Reciprocal function. This one y'all have not seen before. F of x is equal to the reciprocal of x, which is 1 over x. So here, remember, you cannot have 0 in the denominator. Okay. Why can we not have zero in the denominator? It is undefined. Thank you, Casey, before I had an opportunity to get mad and agitated because nobody remembers that you're not allowed to divide by zero. If you try in your calculator, it's going to give you an error every single time because you can't divide by zero. It's not possible, so it's undefined. I can have zero in the numerator all day long. No problem. Cannot have it in the denominator. So what that means then for this parent function is x cannot be zero. Like that's what happens. Because that would cause me to have a zero in the denominator and it doesn't exist. So x cannot be zero. Any other number is okay. It just can't be zero. So if I like choose numbers in here because in the others I've chosen zero and plugged it in, right? But if I choose zero and plug it in here, I have an issue. So it won't work there. But I can plug in one, so one divided by one is one, so I have one and one. If I choose two, I end up with a half. If I choose three, I get a third. Four would be a fourth, five would be a fifth, and so on. So getting closer and closer and closer to this line. If I went back the other direction, let's say I chose a half right here. If I do one divided by a half, then that means that gets that half gets flipped over because you can't really divide by a fraction, you multiply by its reciprocal. So I would end up with one times two, which would give me two right here. If I did a third, I would get three, and a fourth, I would get four, and five, and so on. So this graph ends up looking like this right here. If I do it on the negative side, if I plug in negative one, well, one divided by negative one is negative one. So I get this right here. If I did negative two, I'm going to get negative one half, negative one third, negative so on. And the same thing would happen over here with the fractions. If I did negative one half, it would give me negative two, one 
one third would give you negative three, negative four, negative five. So it looks like can't be zero which means in this case like for this graph y is also never going to be zero because I can't multiply and get zero unless I multiply by zero which we're not doing does that make sense are y'all okay there all right so I also for my range y is not equal to zero now again that would change if we were making some type of transformation but because we're not making any transformations and we're just talking about the parent the zeros are out. Are we okay there? All right, so then if my x-intercept doesn't exist, I don't have one. My y-intercept here doesn't exist. I don't have one for this, for the parent function. So, all right, so let's think about this. If I took this whole graph, so I want you to kind of look at it, and I shifted it down, it would cross the x-axis how many times? If I took this whole thing and I pushed it down, once. If I push the whole thing up, it would cross how many times? So the maximum number of times that I could cross is? Once. Once. Okay, just one time. Also remember this is an x power of one, so it's only gonna be one there. Does that make sense? All right, so in behavior, so I'm looking out here, as x approaches infinity, as I go to the right, what is f of x approaching in this graph? What am I getting closer to here? Am I, am I going to cross that axis line and keep going down? Yes. Go grab that in your calculator for me. So go to your calculator, go to your y equals, and then do alpha y equals and put in 1 over x in there. I want you to put it in there and see what it does. Okay, so your graph on your calculator should look pretty much like what we drew. Now go over to your table, and I want you to look at your x values, as you keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, what is happening to your y values? They're getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, right? Do they become negative ever? Okay, and if we went the other direction, on the negative side for x, we went to the negative numbers, those numbers would be getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller decimals but they're not ever gonna become positive, they're staying negative, right? So am I gonna cross those axis lines? So I'm not. So my graph is not going, my range, my, my range over here, or my f of x, is not ever gonna cross that line, but it's getting closer and closer and closer to whatever that line is, which in this case is zero. That is an asymptote at zero. Y'all remember doing asymptotes in algebra one? We did them with um, exponentials, that's where we see them. Okay, so on the other side, as I go to negative infinity, I have the same situation. F of X is getting closer and closer and closer and closer and closer to that line, but it's never actually gonna touch that line, so it just approaches zero. Does that make sense to y'all? All right, so this graph would be absolutely discontinuous. I've got a horizontal asymptote right here, left to right. I have a horizontal asymptote at y is equal to zero. That's a line that's never going to be touched. I've also got a vertical asymptote right here at x is equal to zero because I'm never going to cross that line either. Now again, if we make transformations to this graph and we move that left or right, up or down, those asymptotes are gonna change. But there is going to be a horizontal and a vertical asymptote for this type of graph. Everybody okay there? Yeah? Okay. All right, exponential. That is gonna be f of x is equal to, and we're gonna use the base of two, two to the x. We can't use one because one to any power is still gonna be one, so we wouldn't be able to see anything. So we're gonna use two to the x. All right, if I put zero in there, anything to the zero power is what? 
What is it? It's one. Anything to the zero power is one. You can put 10,000 to the zero, it's still gonna be one. Okay, so a number is assumed to have a zero power. Um, or anything to zero power, to zero power is one, sorry, can't even speak. All right, so that means if I put a zero in there, two to the zero is one. If I did two to the first power, because I'm talking about x here, if I do two to the first power, I've got two, right? Two to the third power um, is, or sorry, two to the second power is gonna give me four. Let's skip over that one. Two to the third power would give me eight, which would be like up here somewhere. I can't see it. All right, if I take something to a negative power, it causes me to have a fraction. I don't know if y'all remember that from algebra one. Do y'all remember like we had a negative power, we had to move it down to the denominator to make the power positive. Do y'all remember that? So two to the negative one is actually a half. We okay there? If you don't believe me, type it in your calculator, it'll give it to you. Two to the negative one is a half. Two to the negative two is a fourth. Two to the negative three is a ninth, and so on. So it's doing this right here which these graphs y'all saw in algebra one. So it's something like that. All right, so in this case for my domain, I've got an arrow going to the left, this arrow is going to the right, so I can write my domain as negative to positive, right? But over here, what's happening? Am I gonna cross this line? Okay, am I actually gonna even get to touch that line? No. no, it's gonna look like it, but I don't actually. So if I can't actually touch it, how would I write my range then? Why is what in relationship to this line? Not equal to that. Well, it's, it's not equal to that, but it's, it, it's up here, right? So my Y values can't touch this, but they can go up. So how would I write that? What is the value of y at this line? Okay, so y is what in relationship to zero? Does it touch it? No. So I can't say it's equal, what can I say? It's always, it's always gonna be greater than mm -hmm. zero. Always gonna be greater than zero. And again, if I make a transformation and I slide my line down, then yeah, it's gonna touch zero, but it's gonna be greater than whatever that asymptote is. Does that make sense? but it can't be equal to it. Y'all good there? All right, X intercept here, don't have one because I'm not touching that line, right? But I do have a Y intercept at zero and one, okay? How many times, think about if I took this whole graph and I shifted it down, how many times could I cross? I took the whole graph and I slid it down. What do you think? Twice. It's just one. It's just one. If I took this whole thing and I pulled it down here and I made this my asymptote down here, it would shoot up and it would still just go across this with this one line going up. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. In behavior. So as X approaches infinity, as I'm moving to the right, F of X is going up. So I've got infinity there. Here, x is going forever to the left, right? So I've got x approaches negative infinity, but f of x isn't approaching negative infinity. f of x is approaching what here? What's my y value getting closer to? What is it not going to go past? What is it not going to touch? It's not gonna go past zero, so it's getting closer to zero. Anytime you have an asymptote, it is going to affect one of two things, your continuity or your end behavior, one or the other. This one is continuous. X goes forever in both directions. It is continuous. I have a horizontal asymptote at Y is equal to zero. Okay there. All right, the last one that y'all have is f of x 
is equal to the log of x. So a cubic function and a cube root function are inverses. A quadratic and a square root function are inverses. A logarithmic is the inverse to the exponential. So this function has a uh, horizontal asymptote. The log function has a vertical asymptote. So it's basically your exponential flipped on its side. So it has a point right here. Um, oh, no, sorry, it's not right there. It has an x intercept at one. And then it kind of it kind of does like this one does. It comes up and let's see, I believe there may be a point here. Maybe. I'm not positive where these points are without graphing it, because I don't do this one a whole, whole lot. So it does something like this. But there's absolutely an asymptote right here. So my domain here is affected by this. So up here I had a horizontal asymptote which affected my range. Here I have a vertical asymptote, so it affects my domain. Does that make sense? So here x is greater than or equal, no, not equal to, greater than zero. But my range goes from negative to positive infinity because there's nothing that's stopping it from going up and down. I have an x-intercept at 1, 0. I have no y-intercept because of the asymptote there. Maximum number of times it's going to cross the axis line is once. All right. As x approaches infinity, f of x is going up to infinity. But this one, when I come back the other way, x isn't approaching infinity, it's approaching what? Well, x is approaching zero, the barrier. So x is approaching zero. f of x gets to go down forever to negative infinity. So it's the opposite of your exponential function because they're inverses of each other. Does that make sense? All right, this one is discontinuous. It's continuous on this interval, but it's discontinuous as a whole. Are y'all okay there? It has a vertical asymptote at x is equal to zero. Y'all all right with that one?